Have you ever had a man go silent on you? How did it feel when that happened? How did it feel for someone who you've been in relationship, you've been communicating with, and all of a sudden, for whatever reason, you're not hearing from them? Does that create anxiety inside of you? Does that create unease? Does that create frustration? Does that even create anger? Well, it's quite possible that you ex have experienced separation anxiety. And guess what? This isn't singular to women. This is true for men and women alike. Now, I want to share with you, I got the idea for this uh, broadcast today from one of my contemporaries, Mindful Attraction, Alex. And I thought I'd share some thoughts that I had based on his video of the same title. Now, he did discuss separation anxiety, and I want to just bring that to the forefront before I get into the meat and potatoes of what I have to share. But separation anxiety disorder, or SAD, is one of the most common childhood anxiety disorders. SAD is an exaggeration of an otherwise devel 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 <laughs> developmental, God, I'm having a tongue tied, typical anxiety manifested by excessive, excessive concern, worry, or even dread of the actual or anticipation separation from an attached figure. So what that basically means is the, as a little child in your crib, when your mother or father walks away and you feel alone, you feel a separation, it can cause anxiety within you. In fact, if you're not familiar with love attachment, which I'm going to grab the book right now, the book Attached by Amir Levine and Rachel Heller, I highly recommend reading this book to get an understanding of anxious attachment style and avoidant attachment style. That's right, anxious attachment style and avoidant attachment style. So for those of us who are anxious, and by the way, I'm in the anxious category, and I believe this, I did some deep dive into healing of what may have caused this, and there was a moment, uh, I remember when I was uh, about three years old, where my mother left me while I was at a ski resort, and I felt so alone. I mean, I have vivid memory of just crying and feeling so alone and feeling abandoned, and in that moment, I, my world had collapsed. I was literally scared to death. Some 50 years later, I talked to my mother about it and I brought up the ski trip. And I said, do you remember when you abandoned me while we were at the ski trip? And she goes, what do you mean I abandoned you? I go, I was off ski, you know, doing a little bit of snow plow and stuff like that. And she goes, I was 10 feet away. The irony as a child, my view of the world was probably only 10 or 15 feet you know, at that time in my life, and I felt abandoned. So what did that manifest in me as an adult? An anxious attachment style. I highly recommend reading this book to understand what may cause you to be in fight or flight when you're feeling separation, when you're feeling abandonment. And this is true for men and women alike. So now, if you read the book, The Rules, and I'm bringing a copy of this, I'm embarrassed to share this book publicly, but the book, The Rules, is all about game playing and using silence as a way to trigger a man's, you know, unhealthy response, in other words, to create that anxiety within a man by going silent. But I'm here to say that's a temporary solution to a problem. That might briefly create the type of result you want. And quite frankly, that's controlling and manipulative. Now, coming back to attachment style, you must understand that if you're with an anxious attachment style like myself, that silence is going to trigger this anxiety and this need to want to fix the, the situation very quickly. And what happens is in that circumstance, a person can get very needy in this dynamic, okay? The tricky part of using this manipulative tool like discussed in the book, The Rules, is by playing the game of silence with an avoidant attachment style. What happens to that person from childhood is they retreat from within, they retreat within, they retreat within. In other words, what that means is they literally go silent themselves because they're having an inner turmoil going on when you've gone silent. And all that does is push that person away. So if you use silence as a manipulative tool, 
with an anxious person, that'll make them come running towards you and then you will feel overwhelmed. You'll feel exhausted. You'll feel too much enmeshment. If you did it to an avoidant attachment style person, that silence will cause that person to retreat and be silent towards you. So I think it's important to understand human behavior, to understand these dynamics by first understanding your own love attachment style as discussed in the book Attached. I'm going to put it up one more time. But also, I invite you to do the work of the Hoffman process, the Hoffman process. This is a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas and adult traumas that cause you to be unregulated in your life. You know, human beings are rather unregulated, well, unregulated with their emotions. In fact, it's one of the reasons why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help, and Spiritual Work. And by the way, in the link below is uh, all the books I recommend in the link below, okay? I want, I want to really encourage all of you to start doing some work, reading these books, so you can understand your own experiences. And the Hoffman Process is a great book to do a deep dive into healing childhood wounds and traumas. So how does this relate in dating, mating, and relating? I think it's important to recognize that, well, I want to dive into it for a second. Uh, what Tony Robbins talks about is the six basic human needs, the six basic human needs. Now, I want to lean into this for a second because silence can actually be a benefit to you. So first, human need is certainty. We need a level of certainty. I need to know that if I drop this piece of paper, it'll fall to the ground or my, you know, or my life, you know, my concept of the world will probably change. Okay. That's an example of certainty. Leave it. And in relationship, we need to know that we can count on people. What's also a basic human need is uncertainty or variety. Uncertainty or variety. I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but I want to go through the balance of the list. We also need in our lives, it's a human need to feel significant. I suspect you need to have that fe feeling of significance in your romantic relationship, and the man you're with needs a sense of significance for him to lean into your romantic relationship. In addition, we need connection and love. That's an important need. It's one of the reasons why many of us want a life partner. You know, I'm blessed to have found someone. There's a picture of Marie and I where we're in Las Vegas. I'm very blessed. This, this journey to attracting a soul, to a life partner, if you will, took me quite a few years. I utilize the work I do in my private coaching. By the way, there's a link right here to schedule a discovery call with me. It's also in the description below. I use the work that I, I, I'm, I'm proof of my own pudding, okay, doing this work because the reality is, is folks, Life is better with company and dating sucks. I mean, dating really is almost a brutal assault to our emotional uh, well-being. It can be. Dating can be a brutal assault to our emotional well-being because the fact of the matter is, is we have a dysfunctional population who's actively in the dating marketplace and their capacity to be in relationship is merely to be what I call a spender. And a spender is someone who all they want to do is spend time with you. They want companionship, they want connection, they want sex, but they don't have that capacity for deeper commitment. So playing these silent games, playing the games will temporarily work temporarily, but it will also be a detriment in your relationship if you play these games. I'm only leaning into this conversation so you can understand why, based on that separation anxiety that we all humans feel when someone goes silent on you. To finish the, the six basic human needs is the need for growth and the need for contribution, being a, contributing to the world, growing emotionally. But I want to go back to the second human need, uncertainty. You know, it keeps us on our toes. So let me share with you something happened with my sweetheart and I. So about a week or so ago, she was on the phone talking to a friend of hers. And it was interesting. I was sitting next to her and she got up, left and went into the bedroom and closed the door. And I had this weird reaction. Why is she closing the door? Is she like, I went into this fear. I went into this panic mode. You know, and, and quite frankly, it was benign. 
you know, the reason behind it. She just wanted a little bit of privacy because of the person she's speaking to, my little privacy. But it activated my, my stuff that goes back to my childhood where I felt abandoned. Does this make me a weak human being? No, it makes me a human being. And if this happens to you, you are just human when this happens to you. The fact of the matter is what relationships need is, is real, true, direct, honest communication. I'm talking about being vulnerable. I'm talking about being authentic. I'm talking about being transparent. Honest communication and a balance is needed. And yet many of you find yourself stifled in your voice. You you're, you're literally have duct tape over your mouth, fearful of speaking up to a man, and more importantly, being direct when you speak up. You know, when I'm, why I'm leaning into this being direct when you speak up and being fearful of speaking up is because many of you are afraid you'll lose someone by not speaking your truth. And I'm here to say, if your relationship is going to progress into what I lovingly call the juicy, delicious, healthy, happy relationship, it's going to start with a foundation of honest communication with one another. And believe me, Communications, most humans have terrible communication skills. This is why I want to introduce you to a new book today, because this relates to the conversation. The book is called Hold Me Tight by Sue Johnson. And why I'm recommending this book, has anyone read this book before? It helps you understand that anxious and avoidant attachment style. And it also, the subtitle of the book, Seven Conversations for a Lifetime of Love. Many of you don't know where to begin these conversations. These books I recommend are great assets to begin to implement them. And if you're afraid it's going to scare the guy away, I just want you to know, if it's sincere and from the heart, you can't really say the wrong thing to the right person. And using silence is not a healthy way to approach. And at the same time, we need that little bit of that little, the, when my girlfriend went to the bedroom to speak and it created a little anxiety and I talked to her about it and we had a nice little laugh over what happened. We had a nice little laugh. By the way, someone's asking what book was it? The book is called Hold Me Tight by Sue Johnson. Again, it's in the books I recommend. Okay, if you need some support with that, just go to Jonathan Recommend Books. It's The link is in the description below. Why I'm, when I come back to... That sense of variety, that sense of uncertainty that happened with my girlfriend not only created a conversation for us, but it also kept me on my toes to remember that this is a relationship of something that I value, that I'm grateful for, and is a reminder not to take things for granted. And sometimes these little bits of hiccups, these little bits of silence, if you will, actually can keep us on our toes. If we're an emotional grown up. if you are dealing with a dysfunctional human being, if you're dealing with someone who has terrible relationship skills, all it will do is aggravate your relationship, especially if you're an avoidant attachment style. Honest, sincere communication is how you bridge the gap, understanding all of the work I've just talked about to help you better prepare for a relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. And again, all the links in the description below. Schedule a discovery call with me. Join my group. Follow me on Instagram and all the recommended readings that I have as well.